Let's take a look at two images. One was taken with this, a full frame Nikon mirrorless camera. The other image was taken with my iPhone. But can you spot which is which? Let's take a closer look. Now I'm not sure many people will confidently be able to tell which is which, but what do you think? So make your guess and after the intro, we'll see if you got it right. Welcome to the Photo Genius channel. Hi, Paul here from Photo Genius. Welcome to my channel where I post regular photography tutorials, all designed to help you get more from your digital camera so you can take better photos. If you are new to the channel, please consider subscribing. Now at the beginning of the video, I share with you two images, one taken with this, a Nikon full frame mirrorless camera, and the other was taken with my new iPhone. And I asked you to guess which was which. Now if you guessed that picture A was taken with the Nikon and picture B the iPhone, then I'm afraid you got it wrong because picture A was actually taken with the new iPhone 14 Pro Max and picture B was taken with the Nikon camera. Now I would love to know, did you guess right or did you get it wrong? Let me know in the comments below. So this video is not going to be a review of the new iPhone. There's plenty of channels on YouTube that do a better job of reviewing tech than I can. Instead, this video is going to be an opportunity for me to share with you guys some of the images that I've captured over the past week since getting my new iPhone. And of course, if like me, you like taking photos with your phone as well, stick around because I'm going to be throwing in some cool tips along the way. So it's been just over a week since I picked up my new iPhone. I went for the iPhone 14 Pro Max. And I have to say that I've been very impressed so far with the image quality coming out of this smartphone. I've been taking photos not just with this, but also with my Nikon Z6 so that I can compare the results. And of course, I want to share these with you in this video. Let's start by talking about the cameras. The iPhone 14 Pro Max features three cameras, but unless indicated otherwise, all the images featured in this video have been taken with the main camera. Now this features a larger 48 megapixel sensor, an aperture of f1.7 and a focal length of 24 millimeters. To test out the cameras, one of the first things I wanted to do was to go down to the bay and take some photos of the Pelicans, always a popular subject on this channel. As you can see, I mounted the iPhone alongside the Nikon using a lens set to 24 millimeters to match the focal length of the main iPhone camera. I also tried my best to ensure that the composition from both cameras was as close to identical as possible. Now, as you can see from this first image at 24 millimeters, the field of view is fairly wide. So let's zoom in. Now, this first image is taken from the iPhone. Let's compare it with the shot taken with the Nikon. As you can see, there is very little difference between the two images. Now, despite the Nikon being a full frame camera and having a significantly larger sensor, the iPhone has more megapixels. And therefore, due to the larger megapixel count, the iPhone produces the larger images. And as you can see, both cameras also use different image ratios. Now, as promised, in this video, I want to also share some photography tips with you. The first one being portrait mode is not just for portraits. Now, most smartphones will have a portrait mode built into them. And what this does is it blurs the background. In photography, we actually call this a shallow depth of field. And it's a really cool look, but it's not just for portraits. OK, here's a portrait of my dog. And you can see in this image, the background is nice and blurry. But here I've used it to take a photo of my mountain bike and I think this looks pretty cool. Now if we compare this to another image that is not using the portrait mode I still think I prefer the image on the right however portrait mode isn't always perfect. Zoom in and we see that the Apple software has mistaken spokes on the wheel for background detail and actually blurred them away. Now this of course is not ideal. So as you can see, the portrait mode doesn't always get it spot on, but it is a great camera mode. I would definitely explore it and use it. And remember, it's not just for portraits. OK, time to take a look at some more images, this time of some boats on the creek that lead out to the bay. So once again, and just for fun, can you tell which image is from the iPhone and which is the Nikon Z6? Now let's uh, enlarge the images so we can see a bit more detail. We're looking now at 100%. And honestly, I was so impressed with the iPhone here. They are so similar, it's so hard to tell which is which. But let's reveal the answer. 
And did you get it right? Let me know in the comments. Coming up in a moment, I want to show you how the iPhone performs in low light and at night time. But before that, take a look at these two images of a local pub. Now, I chose this subject because I wanted to see how the cameras handled the uh, shady area under the veranda. And when we look at the images side by side, again, they look very similar. Now, zoom in and I do feel that the Nikon Z6 has the edge here in terms of image quality. Although there is more noise coming from the Nikon image than there is the iPhone image. Now if we take a look at the top left hand corner of the image here's where you're going to see the iPhone struggling and this is partly I think because of the backlighting the bright sky. Here you can definitely see a massive difference in terms of image quality. My next tip is to consider picking up a clamp so you can attach your smartphone to a tripod. This is really essential if you want to take great photos in low light or at night time. Now, as you can see, it was getting really dark. So using a mini tripod, I wanted to capture an image of this old boat. Now the sun had set about 10 minutes prior. So after adjusting my composition, I was ready to begin. Now the first thing I did was to set the image quality to raw. Now take a note of the yellow icon. You'll see this if you're taking photos in low light. This shows the image will be a long exposure. The shutter speed is shown in seconds. Now next, to avoid any camera movement, I made sure the timer was set. I press go and after a three second countdown, the exposure begins. And another three seconds later, I have my image. Now considering just how dark it was and that this image was captured with a phone, I am absolutely blown away by the quality. Now I did shoot this as a raw image and this is the edited version. Straight out of camera, this is what it looked like. Now this is because raw images are unprocessed. Now if you want to find out more about shooting raw images, look out for this video. You'll find a link in the description below. Plus if you want more details about the mini tripod that I use, again in the description below you'll find a link. When shooting in low light, the iPhone Pro Max can certainly capture usable images when using a tripod. But in this example, you can clearly see the Nikon outperforming the iPhone in terms of detail and clarity. However, do bear in mind that here I've magnified the image by over 200%. And finally, a couple of images I captured in Brisbane. But once again, can you tell which is which? Now a giveaway is the way in which the iPhone renders bright spots of light. Here the Nikon giving better results. Now despite the iPhone having more megapixels, the image is lacking some detail and also suffering more with digital noise. Now this is because the pixels or photo sites are crammed onto a tiny sensor. But with the Z6 however, the pixels are larger and can therefore capture more light, giving better image quality, capturing a wider dynamic range and performing better in low light situations. Full frame cameras like the Nikon Z6 have significantly larger sensors than you're going to find in a smartphone and this is the reason why they're so popular with astrophotographers. Now over the past few years we've seen that iPhone and smartphones in general have completely killed off the market for lightweight compact cameras. For most people the smartphone in their pocket is enough. But is it enough to replace a traditional dedicated camera? I guess the answer to that depends on what you like to take photos of and what your expectations are. Now speaking as somebody that's very passionate about photography and also works in the industry full time, I personally can't see a day when I will give up using traditional cameras, dedicated cameras. But there certainly is a place for the camera that can fit in your pocket. It's convenient, it can take great photos, and for that reason I think this totally deserves a place on the shelf alongside my proper cameras. So I want to say a big thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this week's video and if you did, you know what to do. Please consider giving it a thumbs up because it does help the videos get noticed. That helps the channel grow. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing. New videos every single week. Want to see more images from me? Follow me on Instagram and if you want to find out more about my photography courses and workshops, you'll find a link in the description below this week's video. All that's left to do, of course, is to say thanks again for watching and I hope to see you again sometime soon. See ya. Bye.